G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about four really important concepts to master if you have a low back stenosis. Now for anyone who doesn't know what that is, and I'm sure you do if you found this video, a stenosis is basically a narrowing of the joint space between spinal segments where the nerve roots come out of and sort of go down the leg into the limb. So now obviously you can have some lower leg pain, you can have some nerve root irritation, you can have some arthritis, some wear and tear, there can be a whole bunch of things going on and associated with stenosis. So I think there's four really important things that you can do in terms of exercises and concepts to be aware of to help manage your symptoms, get them to settle quickly and get you to a point where you've, you've for all intents and purposes conquered that stenosis and it doesn't bother you anymore. Now before we get to that obviously, um, please let me know in the comments down below how you're going with your stenosis. What are you dealing with? How long have you had it for? What is the specifics of your stenosis with that low back? It just really helps me make these videos more specific to you guys. And obviously if you go on to enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you do like this kind of content. And then the last thing that I want to talk about before we get into these concepts is I've created a new low back course and it's on teachable.com. I'll leave the link up here so you can see it. And essentially, it's a combination of 15 years of physiotherapy experience. It's what I've found useful that helps people fix their low back pain. So obviously, we're going to cover some of those concepts in this video today. But if you want a more sort of um, structured, longer form version of how to fix your low back pain, back pain, please go and check that out. Um, we're very proud of it. Um, it's, it really is a fantastic tool for anyone trying to conquer that low back pain. So um, with that being said, we want to get to these four concepts. So, so the first concept that we want to talk about, and I think again, if you've got stenosis, you might be aware of this, but there's a little tweak to this you may not be aware of that I want to cover. And that's essentially that stenosis doesn't like extension-based positions. So the reason for that is, is when we tend to extend, when our spine extends, the joints of our spine close down. So clearly, if you have a stenosis and that joint space is already a little bit smaller than it could be, then excess extension might be irritating an already irritated nerve root or some irritated tissue in that area. So extended base positions are relatively obvious. So the first one is obviously arching backwards. And a lot of people don't necessarily feel like they're spending it a lot of time arching backwards day to day. For a lot of people, the majority of the time that they'll spend in extension will be something where they're on their stomach. Now, if you're a little bit older, for example, you may not spend a lot of time here. So when we say it's important to, to avoid extent, uh, extension-based positions, it may seem relatively easy, but the sneaky thing about this, which I think potentially contributes to the onset of most people's stenosis, and potentially could be one of the hidden reasons for why that tissue degrades and decreases in the first place, is a lot of people can be in relative extension if they're unknowingly in an anteriorly tilted pelvic position. Now, this is really, really important because thanks to the modern world, uh, we spend a lot of time sitting in a position where our hips are at 90 degrees. The front of our hips get really tight. And what this does is it can tend to pull our hips and get our pelvis to dump forwards, creating relative extension in that lower back. So again, if I'm in a good posture, my pelvis is in a good position and I arch backwards, essentially I'm in the same position if I'm standing and my pelvis is tilted forwards. It closes down the joints at the back of the spine. And if you're living in this position a lot throughout the day, then you're constantly asking those, uh, those tissues in that extended position to become annoyed and irritated. So if you already have a stenosis, an anteriorly tilted pelvis can be something that's um, causing havoc for your pain and symptoms. So it's really important to be aware of trying to get out of that position as much as possible. And a great way to figure this out for you is if you are standing up nice and tall, if you squeeze your glutes, that reorientates your pelvis into a good position. So if you are someone who squeezes your glutes and you feel like your pelvis rolls backwards, then that's a dead giveaway that you're potentially spending a lot of time, if not all your time, in an anteriorly tilted position in relative extension that lower back and potentially irritating the tissues where that stenosis might be. So step number one for you, the, the first important concept that I want you to think about is try and stand and squeeze your glutes a little bit more often. Try and get into a more neutral pelvic position more often so that you can free up um, and take the load out of that lower back. So again, it's, a, it's a, an area of stenosis that I think gets overlooked a lot is that a lot of people can be in that anterior tilted position. Now point number two piggybacks off the front of this, off the back of that, sorry, um, is that if you are quite tight through the front of your hips and that's creating this anteriorly tilted position, we're going to give you an exercise to free that up. 
Now for me on the channel, I'm a big advocate for the couch stretch. And again, I'll link that up here as well so you can go through that specifically. But for the purposes of this, uh, because I'm sort of kneeling on the ground here, we'll just do a general hip flexor stretch. So again, if this is uncomfortable, this position is uncomfortable for you, you can definitely put a towel or a cushion or a pillow under that knee. Alternatively, you can do this exact stretch off the side of a chair. Instead of having your knee on the ground, you'll end up sort of hover, you'll be hovering above the ground a little bit more and you can still target the front of that hip. But just to show you with this specifically, by freeing up the front of these hips, it can sort of get you to open up the front there and get you out of that relatively anteriorly tilted position. So the best way to do this is to make sure that you're up nice and tall, your shoulders and your hips stay together. So we're not leaning forward or bending forwards. We're not arching backwards uh, to give us the impression that we're stretching the front of the hip. We want everything to be together. And all we wanna do is we wanna translate your hips and shoulders forwards and start to leave your knee behind as far as you feel comfortable. Obviously you wanna target the tissue at the front of the hip and we wanna make this very specific to you. So when you're doing this, going straight forwards may not be enough for you to target it uh, or at least find the best version of your stretch. You might need to shift your hips to one side, shift your hips to the other side to really figure out which particular position you need to be in to find the most tight area at the front of that hip. And again, once you've found that position, uh, so for me, I found a nice little bit of tightness at the front here. It's not good enough anymore just to stay here in this position. Just holding a stretch for 30 seconds, it just doesn't make the long-term change that we need to or what we deserve to for that, for, that, for that fact. So what I want you to do here is when you're in this position, you've found the position that isolates your tightness. I want to get you to squeeze that glute, tense up the muscles at the front, tense everything in that area and hold that for about five seconds. Again, that maximal contraction when you relax that provides you with a maximal relaxation at the same time. And it sort of reflexively asks that tightness to give. And then once you've done that, you should hopefully feel like you've gained a little bit more range than you had before. You want to repeat that process. Squeeze everything, make sure that that tight spot is, is tight as well, is, so it's tensed as well, sorry. Hold this for a few seconds, then relax, and then go further again. And keep repeating that process until you feel like you stop making change. And obviously compare that to the other side. And then what you'll hopefully find is when you stand back up again, when you squeeze those glutes again, you might find that automatically that pelvis is in a better position and isn't as anteriorly tilted as it was before. So it's a really, really um, left of center way to, to reorientate your pelvis, which then reorientates your lower back. And it can sometimes sound a little bit strange that you're freeing up the front of the hips to help improve something at the lower back at the back. But hopefully you can see that mechanical compromise that can occur if something isn't as good as what it could be. So, so that's uh, idea number two. And one and two obviously sort of mesh together. Now the third exercise that we want to get you to think about is, and we obviously do this a lot on the channel, but it's such a good exercise and I highly recommend doing this, is taking a lacrosse ball and freeing up the joints of your lower back. Now obviously with the stenosis, if you know exactly which level is stenotic and the ones that are problematic, you probably don't need to be digging your ball onto that specific spot. But one of the interesting things that I find clinically is if someone has a right-sided stenosis and that stenosis is encroaching on the nerve or it's giving you some specific pain, we see a lot of patients, probably 90 to 95% of patients, actually have a bunch of joint stiffness on the opposite side at the same level. And I guess my hypothesis and my thinking around this is that as we stiff, uh, stiffen up a section of the back over time, this stops moving very well, but it forces everything around it to move differently, of which can start to create some havoc for a otherwise healthy joint on the opposite side. Potentially that can cause some stenosis going forward. So in order to get that to separate and to free up a little bit faster, we can take a ball and go hunting for that stiffness. So again, if you've been on the channel before, you know what we're about to do here. But essentially what I want you to do with the ball is place the ball right at the base of your spine. And again, if you know that you have a right hand stenosis, then I'll get you to actually start on the left hand side. If you have a left hand stenosis, obviously we'll get you to start on the right hand side. But for the purposes of this video, I'll do it on the left hand side. And all I want you to do here is just lie down gently onto the ball. So we're not right on the spine, we've just rolled off, literally rolled off to the next available spot. And I want to get a sense of how this feels. Now, again, if you have some symptoms down a leg or symptoms into a hip that you get, pay close attention to what happens to those symptoms when you're looking through this spinal stiffness. 
because as soon as you find a spot that influences your symptoms in any way, whether it increases or decreases them, that will tell you exactly where you need to be with this exercise. So again, if you have right-sided symptoms and you're on the left and you feel like your symptoms start to regress, that's brilliant. That's exactly what we're looking for. So, so with this exercise, we're not rolling around on the ball. We're moving the ball around until we feel like we hit a joint or an area that feels restricted. And if you're not sure what that restriction feels like, if you compare the same spots or the same level on the other side, so I'm on the right-hand side now, one side should feel like it sinks in a bit easier than the other. So the side that feels like it's stiffer and doesn't give as much is the side that you want to be on when you're doing this exercise. And the purpose of this exercise is that we're using the ball to gently press into that restricted tissue, those restricted joints, and getting them to slowly give over time. And we're going to stay here for you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 5 minutes, depending on how long you feel you need to be here. And then once you've had enough, I'll get you to move the ball up a tiny bit, move up to the next joint, and go hunting for what you feel with these. Um, you know, you're looking for what you, you can find in this area. So again, just to reiterate, the priority of this exercise is you're looking for things that feel stiff and tight. We're not just going to be obsessed by pain and tenderness. If it's all on the same side, that's completely fine. But traditionally with a lot of people, the painful side is the opposite side to where the stiffness is, at the very least with the stenosis. So again, keep that in the back of your mind, listen to what your body's saying and make sure that the ball is digging into the areas that feel stiff and tight and not just sore. Because again, if it's just sore and symptomatic and it doesn't feel restricted, you probably don't need to be jamming your ball into there anyway. So again, that's one of the best um, exercises um, to do to free up everything around that stenosis, feed some slack into that stenosis and allow that tissue to breathe a bit more, uh, mechanically at least, and hopefully help your symptoms long term. So that's number three. Number four basically comes back to some neural tightness. So what we're going to go through next is a sciatic nerve flossing exercise. So traditionally, most people's stenosis are right at the base of their spine. Again, it's why anteriorly tilted pelvises can potentially be such a strong contributing factor because that ultimately is the next most mobile structure below your back. So if that's tilted forward, then the back's going to be sucked along with that. And the sciatic nerve is formed from nerve roots that come from a lot of the low back segments. And obviously that sciatic nerve goes down through your butt cheek, down the back of the leg. So if you're having any neural symptoms, any pins and needles and numbness in your foot, tingling, you know, calf tightness, excessive hamstring tightness, uh, any burning feelings, then there's potentially some neural tension issues going on. So I'm going to give you an exercise to floss free that neural tissue. Now before we get to this exercise, it's really important to reiterate that the nervous system doesn't stretch in the same way that muscles do. So this, I guess it's important to have this thinking when you do this exercise. We're not trying to stretch the nerve. That's not the point because it doesn't stretch at least not in the same way that the, um, a muscle tissue do and a soft tissue does. So essentially we want to floss this tissue through all the, the musculoskeletal soft tissue channels that it passes through because things can get glued down and, and tied up essentially um, as things become reactive and inflamed and irritated, etc. So the sciatic nerve flossing exercise can be a really good one to do to restore some, some normal motion to that tissue and, and feed a little bit more slack back into that stenosis as well. So. What we want to get you to do basically is we want to get you to have one leg up to 90 degrees with your hands behind your thigh and I like to make sure that you have your foot bent back to begin with um, because all we want to get you to do here is keeping your thigh relatively uh, still the whole time, we want to get you to straighten your leg as far as you feel comfortable. So again remember it isn't a stretch, we're not trying to hold this position, uh, we're not trying to hold on for dear life for 30 seconds, we just want you to come up to the point where you feel some tightness, touch that corner and then come down again and then repeat that process about 15 times. And what I want you to do is when you're looking at your toes here, if you can, you know, if you've got a roof ahead of you, or like for me, I've got a tree branch up here, just take note of where your foot gets to to start with. And what you'll hopefully find is that towards the end of this exercise, you'll start to see that your foot starts to go further and further back without your thigh coming with it. So we want to make sure that thigh stays straight so you can get a really sort of repeatable example of where that foot is and then just keep freeing this up and freeing this up and freeing this up. So again, if you want to, you can change your foot position just to bias different parts of the nerve. So if you get a little bit more sort of discomfort down the front of your leg, if you point your toes, that'll bias the nerve that goes in that area. If you turn your foot inwards a little bit more, you'll get a little bit more of the tightness around the outside of the, uh, the leg. 
If you turn the sole of your foot outwards, again, your bicep a little bit more on the inside of the leg. But the idea is you want to make sure that you do this enough that it starts to free up a little bit more. And then by doing that, you'll hopefully feel that there's not as much neural tension in there. It's fitting some slack back into that sort of bound up, closed down sternotic area. And again, can hopefully pay um, pay good dividends in terms of these things. So, so those four concepts, um, the avoiding extended positions, making sure that you're getting out of that anteriorly tilted shape with some hip flexor stretches, freeing up some slack into that stenosis from around that spine, and also freeing up, uh, feeding some slack into that stenosis via some neural flossing techniques. Give you some great concepts to get those symptoms under control, and then hopefully get you to a point where you feel fantastic long term. Now, I guess the, the last thing I wanted to talk about, you could probably say is like a fifth bonus conversation. We have to have this conversation every time we do a video because um, we need to understand the context behind why things are the way that they are. So again, if you have a specific stenosis, if you have a, uh, a level that's become sore, when you get the ball out, when you dig it into your back, you feel like there's some very specifically stiff segments of your spine and other areas aren't that stiff, there has to be a reason why that's happened. It doesn't just happen. It's not age related because one side's different to the other. There has to be some fundamental things that you're doing with that area that ask it to become stiff and tight over time, completely unknowingly, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. So ultimately, this next conversation is always about sitting habits and postural habits. Now, we talked briefly about how sitting at 90 degrees, those hips at 90 degrees, you can ask those hips to get stiff all the time. So spending less time sitting can obviously be a great way to decrease the need to keep having to do that hip flexor stretch. But ultimately, we also want to have a conversation about the position that your spine is in. Now, again, if you found that a lot of your stiffness is a little bit higher, there has to be a reason why that specific segment, or even lower down, that that specific segment has become stiff and why one particular side has become stiff. And for a lot of people, that just simply reflects the positions that they let their spine dump into. You know, when they're sitting up on the couch or sitting up in bed reading a book, they're sitting down uh, driving a car, for example. Whatever the sitting position or the sustained uh, static position that your spine is in, you have to take the time to take a step back and appreciate how good that position is. Because if you don't, then all the, the mobility exercises and the potential strength exercises that you'll be doing well, you'll always be pushing things uphill. You won't be sort of consistently getting to a point where you feel like you're making progress. You'll be sort of going around and around in a circle consistently. And over time, you might find that that stenosis will start to regress a little bit uh, beyond what you were hoping it to. So uh, again, I guess the final bonus, uh, if you can call it that, now posture is not a, a sexy topic, so it's probably not a bonus, but um, that awareness is vital to make sure that these exercises are things that you don't have to keep doing. Um, and if you're looking to try and dig yourself out of a hole, it, it's probably one of the most important things to consider while doing that. So, uh, so with that being said, um, I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments down below if it was. Slap a like on the video uh, just to help us out. And obviously, please subscribe if you're new. And again, please consider checking out that low back pain course. Uh, it, if you've got a spinosis, it's bread and butter for you. It's low-hanging fruit. It'll go through all the things that you need to do. Pretty much the stuff that we've spoken about. Yeah, and a whole bunch of extra stuff as well. So please consider checking that out. Um, but until then, I'll see you in the next one.